Hello, Internet. Welcome to another episode of Eric's Corner with a word of the not-so-wise. Uh, I have a, another video today I put together about the M35A2 deuce and a half. Um, it, it's about a little bit more than just the deuce. It's uh, some information about 12-volt battery systems. Um, I spoke in another video about uh, replacing uh, deuce and a half batteries, but I got a total knowledge bomb dropped on me by a... Uh, local business owner who's been specializing in batteries and so on and so forth. So I thought I would expand a lot on what I said. Um, I, I would have to go through about five videos to see exactly what I said. I got a pretty good idea, so I might contradict myself a little bit. Um, it's just how it's kind of going to be. But so today's episode brought to you by Full Power Starter and Alternator Repair. Um, he's not actually sponsoring me, but he took about 20 minutes of his very valuable time. Um, explaining a lot of these things to me, so I thought I would uh, relay the information to you guys. So, before in my video, I said something along the lines of spend the money on the big batteries. Well, uh, my batteries finally got to the point that they wouldn't even turn over the engine of my Deuce. Um, I pulled the batteries out, they were 6 uh, TMF. <laughs> I will get the uh, national stock number off of them if you'd like. Um, because I hit up the dude that I bought the deuce from. I said, hey, when were these batteries replaced? He said, I have no idea. I said, well, when did you buy it? He said, 2008, 2009. It's 2024, because there, no, uh, there was no sticker on the battery giving me a year. So the batteries are at least 15 years old. So I'm like, yeah, those are the batteries that I want. I looked it up, they're $600 each, plus shipping. So $1,400 worth of batteries is kind of a doozy. Um, so he... We talked about it for a minute and he recommended, um, so I went, uh, was going to get interstate batteries because it's something the uh, commercial fishermen up here pretty much swear by, and I, I know they make a very good product. Um, I priced these batteries at Napa. I think they were a little less than $400 a piece. Napa makes absolutely fantastic products. There are things that I won't buy unless they're Napa. Their batteries lately, we've been having some problems with them. Um, I don't know if it's user error or what. Um, but he recommended a <laughs> different battery than the actual almost perfect cube ones because they're expensive and so on and so forth. This other battery, he said they're readily available. You'll get just as much power. Um, they're 13 by 7 inches. And, um, <clears throat> well, he had me convinced. They're 175 bucks a piece. I'm like, sweet. I'm spending that instead of a thousand. I'm spending 300 and something instead of a thousand. Um, he said, he said he didn't know what the availability on the other batteries were. So we talked about it and I was like, well, these won't fit in my battery box. Um, he's like, well, you'll have to go with a regular car battery, which I really didn't want to do. Uh, uh, advantage of going with a regular car battery, you can run a six pack setup, or I'm sorry, a three pack setup. You have your two starting batteries and then you'd have your six or your single uh, non-series hooked up 12 volt battery to run your radio and so forth. Um, I was like, well, I just run it off of the six volt, God, I keep saying six, 12 volt side of uh, one of my batteries. He said, don't do that. So your alternator is putting off 28 volts. So you're getting 14 volts to each battery through the bridge wire. Um, if you run off your 12 volt side, now he said for an emergency, absolutely do it. If it's something you have to continuously do, swap your batteries back and forth. Now, stop banging on your keyboard. I know there's a deuce guy out there saying, I've been doing that for 30 years and I've never had a problem. Well. He was explaining to me in the context of um, road graders, loaders, things that will run in extreme inclement weather up on the north slope of Alaska, just here locally. I mean, it's one degree out right now um, where you have cold uh, being the problem. So your deuce that you're going to let idle for five, ten minutes after you run it, could, you know, if you shut all the things off drawing from this side, you'll stop the drain on them. You run a battery maintainer, they'll balance out. But if you're running, say, a heater or a radio, I was running a heater off of mine, even in a one and a half, two amp, you know, three, four amp draw, this one will take more of a load and this will start to get more of a charge. It'll start getting 14, 15, 16, 17 amp um, charge. So you're cooking this battery. This one is going to get lower and lower. So when you stop, if you have batteries in parallel, like your average diesel pickup will have two of them, they're in parallel. It's positive to positive, negative to negative, so you still have 12 volt. This is series. This goes to a ground somewhere on the deuce, and then you have your bridge wire, positive to negative, and then this will run to your starter and alternator and so forth. He also recommended putting a switch on this to firewall it. Um, so 
eventually this will take more of a load and then you know you run it day after day after day i don't know exactly how long it would take but i'm thinking within like a few months of consistent use so this one drains a lot your one battery is taking the load of starting your rig and again these are 300 some horse engines not your 135 horse deuce and then this battery will be low you'll leave it over a long weekend it's cold out this battery will freeze You're, you've boiled all the juice out of this battery now you have two dead batteries that are um, I think it's running me about $400. Uh, he called and checked on the, um, the interstates that are the correct size, and they're only $275 a piece. He thought they were going to be about $450, which I really didn't want to spend. I was going to end up using car batteries, which I recommended against, but it, I mean, it'll get you there. And again, if you run that three pack that I said, which you're still in it for way less buying a third battery, buy a 24 to 12 volt uh, battery charger and run all your stuff off that third battery. Then these two are isolated. If you're, I told him I wanted to make a camper out of the back of mine and I'd like to have a battery for running a heater and stuff like that. Well, that's great because they won't be attached to these batteries. These will start, you'd kill that battery. Oh, well, you'll still fire up and then it'll charge the other one. So I ended up ordering the interstates because they ended up being uh, cheaper and I'm gonna get an 8D from him. He has used 8Ds that are still in perfect running condition for only a hundred bucks. Normally they're over $400, $500 a piece. So I'll do that eventually. So not gonna run the three pack like I talked about. Um, the interstates and down in the States, you know, I'm up in Alaska, they'll probably be a good 50 bucks a piece cheaper. Don't go with car batteries, just spend the extra $150 on, on these for when you really have to crank on it to get it fired up. So um yeah i mean i think i covered everything the um six tmf which he knew off the top of his head which was weird i walked in and asked him i said i need uh batteries for my deuce and a half he's like oh the m35a2 multi-fuel i was like yeah how what how, how did you know that like it was it was crazy how how much he had rattling around um he's been rebuilding starters for and alternators for I mean, D9 bulldozers, loaders, road graders, uh, marine boat engines. He's been doing this for ever since I met him 20 years ago. So he's got 20, 25, 30 years experience. He's very well respected in the community. So what he, what he tells me about this, I take as gospel. So as far as running off of one, uh, off your uh, 12 volt side, um, not recommended. I'm going to stop doing it as soon as I can. I actually hooked up a couple car batteries to get it to my buddy's shop to let it thaw. He's on vacation, so I'm going to use his shop while he's gone. Um, and then what did I do? I just threw him on the, on the heater side. I mean, again, I'm, or 12 volt side to run the heater. I was not going too far and it's, <laughs> it was five degrees out. So I wanted my heaters. They didn't seem to do a lot of good windows still fogged up. So Again, in an emergency, and you can flip these back and forth. If you have to run something off of them for some reason, flip them back and forth to keep one from cooking. Now, I put a battery maintainer on mine that might balance them out, um, and I'm not usually running for very long. I could probably get away with it for quite a while. This might have had something to do with the demise of these batteries, but they were 15 years old, and they were getting weak uh, to begin with. I had to leave the maintainer on it all the time, or, or they would die. Um, they died at least twice in, in cold weather last winter or the winter before. I got the battery maintainer. I just wired it right into the deuce and just plug it in every time I stop. Um, so yeah, don't cook your batteries. I'll get you the national stock number for the ones that I had in there. If you, if you have the $1,400 to spend on those batteries, by all means. I'll probably get eight years out of the ones, the interstates that I got. Hopefully I'll get longer, but I mean, a third the price to get half as long oh well i'll upgrade in seven eight years hopefully i have the money to do a frame off on it by then anyway so um excuse the artwork um, i'm not the dude from uh engineering explained um if he says something contradicting what i'm telling you um i i don't know why he would then it's he's i've told you before he'd be the better source to go to and maybe not over what the guy i'm uh telling you about said um tons of experience with equipment. So, uh, I would, uh, I would just go with what he says on that. Again, he's talking about the application of loaders and road graders and crap that you're going to run for 14, 18, 24 hours a day in extreme inclement weather. Your deuce, you're probably not doing that. Uh, the only reason I was able to go to my buddy's house is because I chained it all the way around and, uh, 
to be able to handle the slick roads because the non-directional tires are absolutely just terrifying on on slick roads i mean you i i would not even take it on any kind of icy road without, without at least one pair of duels chained up um i think i covered everything um again that three pack system will fit in your uh factory deuce box which i wanted to keep because you know nostalgia um, i'm in the position where i could build a battery box to handle the bigger boat starter battery um if i wanted but i like the original look and again it was it was 200 more dollars uh to get the ones that fit properly so um that's my two cents relayed through uh the guy at uh, full power um if you have any questions hit me up or of course you can look him up he's here in homer uh, he'd be happy to talk to you and uh, give you some more pointers so um, I think that covers it. Uh, thank you for joining me for my uh, one of my doomsday prepper slash deuce and a half videos. So hope to see you again real soon.